This presentation is for Chapter 3, Part 2, Income Statement and Statement of Stockholders' Equity. Operating profit, also called EBIT, or earnings before interest and taxes, is the second step of profit determination in the multi-step income statement. The figure for operating profit provides a basis for assessing the success of a company apart from its financing and investing activities and separate from tax considerations. The operating profit margin is the ratio of operating profit to net sales. This illustration shows the calculation of operating profit margin for Sage Inc. for 2014, 2015, and 2016. The ratio dipped in 2015 but recovered in 2016 and improved over 2014. Referring to the common size income statement, you can see that despite the percentage increase in cost of goods sold over the past two years, SAGE reduced the percentage of selling and administrative and advertising expenses enough to increase operating profit. The MD&A analysis explains the reason for the increase in actual dollars spent in these periods is related to e-commerce operations which first appear in 2016. Some of this expense was related to increasing advertising to promote the new e-commerce operations. The other income expenses includes revenues and cost other than from operations such as dividend and interest income, interest expense, gains and losses from investments, equity earnings and losses, and gains and losses from the sale of fixed assets. Firms, primarily financial institutions and insurance companies that carry debt and equity securities classified as trading securities, report these investments on the balance sheet at market value, with any unrealized gains and losses included in earnings. In the assessment of earnings quality, the analyst should consider the materiality and the variability of the non-operating items of income, such as gains and losses on the sale of major capital assets, accounting changes, extraordinary items, investment income from temporary investments in cash equivalents, and investment income recognized under the equity method. An additional issue that users sometimes encounter in attempting to evaluate financial statement data is the method, either cost or equity, employed to account for investment in the voting stock of other companies. The equity method of accounting should be used when the investor can exercise significant influence over the investee's operating and financing policies. This usually exists when there is an ownership at 50% or more of the voting stock, but it can also occur when there is representation on the investee's board of directors, major intercompany transactions, and technological dependence. Analysts should be aware of whether a company uses the cost or equity method. The equity method allows the investor to recognize their proportionate share of the investee's net income or net loss as income irrespective of whether or not there has been payment or non-payment of dividends. The equity method is justified because it fits the requirements of the accrual basis of accounting. The investor's share in investee income is recorded by the investor in the period in which it is earned rather than as cash is received. Use of the equity method somewhat distorts earnings in the sense that income is recognized even though no cash may ever be received. Under the cost method, the investor recognizes investment income only to the extent of cash dividends received. The investment account is carried at cost or market depending on the provisions of the FASB rules that relate to this area. In this example, we assume that Company A has acquired exactly 20% of the voting common stock of Company B for $400,000. Company B reports $100,000 of earnings for the year and pays $25,000 in cash dividends. For Company A, income recognition in the earnings statement and non-current investment account on the balance sheet are different depending on whether the cost or equity method are used to account for the investment. 
This illustration shows the calculation of investment income and the investment account under the cost method. The income is limited to the dividends received of $5,000 and the investment account is reported at the original cost of $400,000. The equity method permits Company A to report its 20% ownership in Company B's earnings of $100,000 or $20,000 instead of the dividend income of $5,000. The investment account under the equity method is increased by the amount of investment income recognized of $20,000 and is decreased by the dividends received of $5,000, resulting in a $415,000 balance reported in the financial statements. The equity method, as stated previously, distorts earnings because the income is recognized even though no cash may ever be received. It assumes that the investor could force the investee to pay the dividends, but that may not actually be true. Earnings before income taxes is a profit recognized before the deduction of income tax expense. As discussed in Chapter 2, there can be differences in the amount of income tax expense and income taxes actually paid. A reconciliation is provided to show the difference between the two in the notes to the financial statements. The effective tax rate is the ratio of income taxes to earnings before income taxes. This is an illustration of the calculation of the effective income tax rate for SAGE Inc. for years 2014 through 2016. The effective rate dipped somewhat in the 2015 year, but returned to 45% in 2016. It is important to note that the effective tax rates can be affected by net operating losses and foreign taxes. Carry forwards of net operating losses can offset future earnings and foreign tax rates can be lower than the U.S. tax rates. Users of financial statements need to be aware of the difference between earnings increases due to core operations versus items such as tax rate deductions in assessing earnings quality. As mentioned previously, special or one-time items are reported that will not recur in the future such as discontinued operations and extraordinary gains and losses. Discontinued operations occur when a firm sells or discontinues a clearly distinguishable portion of its business. The results of continuing operations are shown separately from the operating results of the discontinued portion of the business. Any gain or loss on disposal is also disclosed separately. Extraordinary gains and losses are items that meet two criteria, unusual in nature and not expected to recur in the foreseeable future. Net earnings are the bottom line represent the firm's profit or loss after consideration of all revenue and expense reported during the accounting period. The net profit margin shows the percentage of profit earned on every sales dollar. It is a ratio expressed as a percentage of net earnings to net sales. This is an illustration of the calculation of the net profit margin for Sage Inc. for the years 2014 through 2016. The net profit margin decreased in 2015 but increased in 2016 above the amount for 2014. Earnings per share is the net earnings available to common stockholders for the period divided by the average number of common stock shares outstanding. Companies with complex capital structures, which means they have convertible securities, stock options, or warrants must compute both basic and diluted earnings per share. The diluted earnings per share is slightly lower each year compared to the basic earnings per share because of the dilutive effect of stock options that employees could exercise in the future. Analysts must consider any material changes in the number of common shares outstanding as this affects the earnings per share calculations. Comprehensive income, as discussed in Chapter 2, is required to be reported on the face of the financial statements in the Statement of Stockholders' Equity or in a separate financial statement. This is an illustration of the Consolidated Statements of Comprehensive Income for Applied Materials, Inc. for 2011, 2012, and 2013. Items that are required to be reported in Comprehensive Income include foreign currency translation effects, unrealized gains and losses on investments in debt securities, 
additional pension liabilities, and gains and losses in the fair market value of cash flow hedges. Foreign currency translations effects arise from changes in the equity of foreign subsidiaries as measured in U.S. dollars that occur as a result of changes in foreign currency exchange rates. When U.S. firms operate abroad, the foreign financial statements must be translated into U.S. dollars at the end of the accounting period. Because the value of the dollar changes in relation to foreign currencies, gains and losses can result from the translation process. These fluctuating exchange gains and losses are accumulated in the stockholders' equity section. Unrealized gains and losses on available for sale debt securities are reported in other comprehensive income. Additional pension liabilities are reported as other comprehensive income when the accumulated benefit obligation is greater than the fair market value of plan assets, less the balance in the accrued pension liability account, or plus the balance in the deferred pension asset account. Companies using cash flow hedges, which are derivatives des designated as hedging, the exposure to variable cash flows of a forecasted transaction, are required to initially report any gain or loss from a change in fair market value of the cash flow hedge in other comprehensive income, and subsequently reclassify the amount into earnings when the forecasted transaction affects earnings. The Statement of Stockholders' Equity details the transactions that affect the balance sheet equity accounts during an accounting period. Annual reports are required to show three years of stockholders' equity information. This illustration of Sage Inc. Statement of Stockholders' Equity for the years ending December 31, 2014, 2015, and 2016. Some companies have stock dividends, stock splits, or reverse stock splits during accounting period. With stock dividends, a company issues to existing shareholders additional shares of stock in proportion to current ownership. Stock dividends reduce the retained earnings account. Stock splits also result in the issuance of additional shares in proportion to current ownership. They are generally used to lower the market price of a firm's shares to make the common stock more affordable for the average investor. Reverse stock splits are the opposite of a stock split and occur when a company decreases rather than increases its outstanding shares. A reverse stock split usually occurs when a company is struggling financially. Neither stock splits nor reverse stock splits affect retained earnings. The assessment of the quality of reported earnings is an essential element of income statement analysis. Many firms report more than just the generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP earnings numbers in their annual reports and quarterly press releases. These additional numbers are referred to as pro forma earnings, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, core earnings, or adjusted earnings, and have added not only to the confusion of investors, but have in many cases affected the quality of financial reporting. The earnings reported on the income statement is rarely the same as the cash generated during the accounting period, because it is cash that a firm needs to service debt, pay suppliers, invest in new capital assets, and pay cash dividends, cash flow from operations is a key ingredient in analyzing operating performance. Segmental data include revenue, operating profit or loss, assets, depreciation and amortization, and capital expenditures by industry components. These disclosures facilitate the analysis of operating profit and contribution by each segment of a diversified company. This is the end of the presentation for Chapter 3, Part 2.